Welcome back to Football Daily, where today we're looking at 10 teammates who fell out and became enemies. 10. Rooney and Ronaldo We start our list off with a fallout that didn't last long but had huge on-the-field implications. In the 2006 World Cup, England played Portugal in possibly the most boring quarter-final ever until the 62nd minute, that is, when Rooney confused which kind of balls he was meant to kick and left Carvalho in a heap on the field. Ronaldo, being the good sportsman he is, sprinted to the Argentinian ref to persuade him to have his club teammate sent off, which he succeeded in. Rooney's face was one of betrayal as the red card was shown, and CR7's infamous wink cemented the fact that a knife had been firmly placed in Rooney's back. Portugal went on to win the game on penalties, with Ronaldo scoring the winner. With Sven Goran Eriksson resigning as England manager and Beckham stepping down as England captain, the on-field moment in Germany had turned Ronaldo from hero to temporary villain in Manchester. The problem nearly pushed him to a move to Spain that summer, but luckily Sir Alex Ferguson was there to settle things and Ronaldo enjoyed another three years at the club. 9. Schneider v the Dutch national team Though a reformed man, Schneider spent a good chunk of his career being an egomaniac and belittling his teammates, which he found the most fun doing in the Dutch national team. On one occasion, he took it too far. When newly promoted goalkeeper Pete Veldhuizen was enjoying his breakfast, Schneider decided to put him in his place, asking Pete how much he earns a year, and after hearing the response, bragged about making over 20 times that number. And his inflated sense of self-worth also bubbled over onto the pitch where he argued with Van Persie over free kicks for a number of years. And what was Van Persie's response? Simply by referring to him by his derogatory nickname, Smurf. 8. Robert Lewandowski v Jakob Lajakowski Lewy and Kuba, as they're known, have never really seen eye to eye, although you wouldn't have guessed that with their on-the-field play for both Dortmund and Poland. Their dislike for each other wasn't strong until their country's captaincy was called into question. In 2014, injuries saw Kuba sidelined for a total of 308 days, meaning he missed a total of 60 Dortmund games. In this time, his teammate Lewandowski took the reins as Poland's captain and left Kuba's beloved Dortmund for rivals Bayern Munich. To add insult to injury, he remained captain when Blaszczykowski was fit and was even left out of the must-win European qualifier against the Republic of Ireland, allegedly due to a conflict over the captaincy. The two have seemed to come to terms with their international roles and Lewandowski has remained captain since, but deep down, Jakob must be getting greener and greener with envy, probably while he moved to Wolfsburg. 7. The Netherlands team Now we're all used to the Netherlands national team being a bit of a shambles, but during the 1990s it went a lot deeper than results. Problems within the side had stemmed from Ajax, where the club's young black players, including Edgar Davids and Patrick Kluivert, complained that they earned 80% less than Frank de Boer and Danny Blin. This alleged divide was amplified in the national side at Euro 96. Reports of a genuine racial divide within the Netherlands squad turned out to be grossly exaggerated by the press, but the animosity was there for all to see. Captain Blind publicly criticised Davids and Clarence Seedorf after their draw with Scotland, and while Seedorf hit back at Blind's lack of respect, Davids was dropped for the next game. Angry at this treatment, the Ajax midfielder accused manager Gus Hiddink of being too deep in the arse of Blind. Unsurprisingly, Davids was banned from the squad for these comments, as a talented but broken Netherlands side crashed out in the quarterfinals. 6. The Charlton Brothers a pair of English legends now. Considering what the two have had to deal with, Bobby in the Munich air crash and the pair winning the 1966 World Cup, you would have thought the two would be inseparable. But alas, that's not the case. The feud started when Jack publicly expressed his feelings about Bobby's wife, Norma, adding that he doesn't like the fact he prefers her over his blood relatives. But it didn't stop there. With Bobby's wife and mother never seeing eye to eye themselves, it created a rift in the family, which ended in Bobby not visiting his ill mother before her passing. A grudge that has only worsened, the two refused to speak to each other, with Bobby saying he doesn't want to know him. It seems the Charlton boys will see this row to the grave. 5. John Fashnu v Laurie Sanchez John Fashnu was not one to be messed with. The Gladiators presenter and karate black belt was always an opinionated character, even disowning his own brother when he came out as gay. The crazy gang were always known for their violent antics, but it wasn't just the opposition they were trying to batter. Sometimes it was each other. 
Heads clashed often and the issues were usually settled quickly, but Sanchez and Fashnu's beef was a long-lasting one. The two finally butted heads when Fashnu tried to orchestrate a training session with Laurie being unhappy about taking his orders. The two took themselves for a walk to settle their issues. Unsurprisingly, it didn't work. They both knew they were going to fight each other and with Fashnu's black belt, you'd expect Laurie on the floor before you could say a wooga, but it wasn't to be. The scuffle was broken up and the two got on with their footballing duties. 4. Wayne Bridge and John Terry When you mention the name Wayne Bridge, most people don't think of the Premier League, FA Cup and League Cup he won with Chelsea, or the fact he was in the PFA Premier League Team of the Season in 2002. The first thing you think of is JT and the handshake. The Blues captain and serial scumbag's affair with his former club and country's teammate ex-partner and mother to his child was revealed when a judge threw out his gag order that would have kept the affair under wraps. By trying to bury the truth, JT did the complete opposite and the whole nation found out, including Wayne Bridge. Just two days before the pair were meant to play against each other, Wayne announced he didn't want to be involved with the England team as his position had become untenable and potentially divisive. This led to a feisty clash between Chelsea and Man City where the infamous handshake or lack of occurred. City did thump a nine-man Chelsea 4-2 at Stamford Bridge, so there was some redemption for Bridge, but not that much. 3. Terry and Cole v Anton and Rio Surprise, surprise, it's John Terry once again. Less than two years after news broke about his scandalous affair with Wayne Bridge's girlfriend, the Chelsea man once again set a wonderful example to all young fans by calling QPR defender Anton Ferdinand a black <laughs> on the field. This time, it didn't need a newspaper investigation to reveal what was said. Everyone saw the video evidence that evening on Match of the Day, and Terry was once again disgraced. This led to a big falling out with England defensive partner and Anton's brother, Rio, who labelled the FA a joke for their dealing with the situation, and the Man United centre-half was left out of England's Euro 2012 squad as a result of the pair's animosity. Meanwhile, Rio got into trouble himself as he attacked Three Lines teammate Ashley Cole, who appeared to protect Terry when he testified in court. He labelled Cole a chockite, completing a vicious cycle of racist slurs which broke up England's greatest ever back line. 2. Colo Torre and William Gallas The now two-time Invincible enjoyed a healthy seven years with the Gunners, picking up his first undefeated season with Sol Campbell as his centre-back partner. All was rosy until Campbell left for Portsmouth in 2006, and his replacement William Gallas came and shook things up for Torre. The tension was said to have been started when Gallas tore into the Ivorian after a scoreless draw against Aston Villa. Torre looked to Wenger to defend him, but it wasn't to be, and Colo was actually dropped as the manager didn't want the divide to appear on field. Although the intended plan was to sort the problem out so they can continue to perform as a duo, it had the reverse effect, with the two players eventually not talking even while in the game. This led to Colo handing in a transfer request, which was initially denied. But knowing it was either him or Gallas, Torre took the opportunity to head to Manchester. Gallas, on the other hand, moved to the other side of North London a year later. 1. Lee Boyer and Kieran Dyer In 2005, we all thought Newcastle's Lee Boyer and Kieran Dyer had got their days confused and forgot April Fool's was the day before. In front of 52,000 angry Geordies, they started tearing lumps into each other after Gareth Barry had scored his second and Villa's third. It's understandable to be furious if Gareth Barry scores two in just seven minutes, but the two lost their heads when they blamed each other for the team's poor performance. And within seconds, Lee Boyer had Kieran Dyer by the collar and started laying into him. The pair were both sent off, and the arguments continued in the changing room, with the fight only stopping when Graham Souness offered to fight them both. So we hope you enjoyed that, and if you want to check out more of our videos, then click here on screen. Don't forget to like and subscribe and get on our Snapchat and our Twitter.